Well, Rami Malek, are you the bravest actor around taking on someone as loved and distinctive as Freddie Mercury? It's quite the gamble, isn't it? Mm. Uh, yes, very daunting, challenging. I did second guess myself for quite a while, and then I thought, look, this opportunity only presents itself, especially this one, maybe once in a lifetime, mm-hmm. and it, I, it'd be a real letdown to to pass this up. And I thought, I thought I had enough time to prepare to get it right. So, when you were offered this role, who did you ring first? Who? <laughs> oh, I went straight home to my mom and Did my you? brother. Who my mom basically looked and said, "Oh no, this is a bad idea." Oh. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and quick, you know, my br- my brother has seen me dance out on the dance floor, and he says, "You know what? Your type of weird gyrating could actually work for <laughs> once in its life." <laughs> But on that, you actually did a lot of work uh, with a movement coach, didn't you, to get into I, Freddie Mercury's body, essentially? I did. I mean, I, I, we, we didn't even have the film greenlit by Fox, but I said, if I'm going to take this up, I'm, I just flew myself to London. I flew, uh, uh, I put myself up in a hotel and I, just, I asked for a choreographer to help. Yeah. Um, put this together and then I realized you know after watching all all the archival footage and and everything I realized nothing about this guy was rehearsed nothing was choreographed I need to be able to do this as spontaneously as he did mm-hmm. so uh, God bless Polly Bennett for working on this with me day in and day <laughs> out until we had uh, day one of shooting Live Aid because uh, you were already a Queen fan weren't you you, you liked their music before this Is that I right? did yeah. I did but I had I mean we all we all kind of had this uh, idea about w- what Queen is because of, uh, I think, uh, for, for my generation, the 80s, but I had no idea uh, what they did in the 70s. Mm. Um, it, that was something that was very new to me. I'd seen pictures of him in the glam rock look, but I didn't, I didn't really know deeply yeah. what had gone on in that period. So then what was the biggest surprise for you, Rami, in, in stepping into someone else's life that, I mean, has been so catalogued? I had no idea about his lo- early life, love life. I had no idea about him being engaged to a woman. I had no idea what his real name was. I had mm. no idea that he was an immigrant. And thank God those things existed because... Uh, those aspects of his humanity and his his struggle to identify himself were uh, things that I could just say, oh well, that's very human. That's something I I can can understand, and maybe that's a way in so mm. that the weight of his magnitude on stage doesn't feel like it's going to be just as as daunting as it could be. It must be incredible for you now to then look back, given that you can relate in that way. Now look back at the success that you've now had personally, being an artist, and you know coming to those terms of struggling to tell your family about this is where we're going and this is what I want to do, and now this success, even though Mum did say this was going to be a massive mistake. <laughs> this particular role. <laughs> uh, well, she's pretty happy. Yeah, I had a TV show that is called Mr. Robot, uh, doing yeah. the final season of that, and she's like, "Hey, uh, you know, you, you got something good going on here. You sure, you sure you want to spoil all that?" But well, that was it. That was a risk too. So uh, I enjoy these challenges. I never thought that I would ever be sitting here in Sydney talking to you about this today. Mm. That that is. Uh, that is, it's wild. I'm, I'm get to get to reach you guys in Adelaide. That is wild to me. Well, Bohemian Rhapsody is co-produced by Brian May, Roger Taylor, and also Queen's manager Jim Beach. What did they say when they first saw you perform as Freddie Mercury? When they first saw a clip of you as him? I. Well, I left the office of Graham King and Dennis O'Sullivan in Los Angeles six hours after meeting them, being told that I had the role, and I just couldn't believe it. I mm. couldn't believe it, uh, and I truly, honestly did not believe it. I went and said, yeah, well, maybe this is going to happen, but it probably won't. And then uh, a few weeks later, they asked me to put something on tape, so I put on a tape of myself uh, doing an interview as Freddie, and... Uh, They seemed to like that, but I think they needed to see more. So I went into Abbey Road. I put four songs on tape, and they filmed it. And uh, then I did kind of an impromptu Q&A with the writer, Anthony McCartan, and Dennis O'Sullivan, one of the producers. Mm -hmm. As I was done singing these four songs, they just started throwing questions at me about Freddie's childhood, who was Freddie's best friend, things (sighs) of that nature. And so the next day, I took that over to Roger Taylor's house, 
and I met Brian May and Roger Taylor for the first time, trying to keep my knees from uh, yeah. knocking together. Yeah. I put on some some boots because I'm about an inch shorter than Freddie, and I uh, walked in with a little bit of Freddie swagger, not too much. I didn't want to be offensive, and right. I uh, tried to read them because I knew they had got the uh, the video of, of my work sent the night before. But it turns out that they weren't able to download it. So I oh. was standing in between Roger Taylor and Brian May watching them watch me play their best friend. Oh. Can you imagine? I mean, I get awkward enough when you give someone a Christmas present and they open it in front of you. Like, I find uh, that confronting. This must have been horrendous. It was horrendous. And then when I do the four songs and Roger Taylor's unable to read. Uh, he's very, very protective. Yeah. And Brian keeps giving me an eye and a little bit of a nod. And at, at one point I could sense that this was going okay until there was a moment where I start getting the questions after the four songs. And, you know, they asked me about the childhood, while well, it was an upheaval of an, of an upbringing. Mm -hmm. Then they said, well, who would you say is Freddie's best friend? And I could not remember how I answered the question. There I am standing between these two men. And I, th I, I watch, I watch, and as Freddie, I say, well, that, w that would have to be Mary. Mary's the person that I trust yeah. the most. And uh, a beat goes by, and then the both of them go, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, as they nod. And from that moment, I just relaxed. Yeah, you could thought, breathe. Okay. Uh, uh, I just, as if this wasn't daunting e enough. Yeah. There was that. But after that, um, I heard Brian May say it was uncanny. And then we went over to a, to a little bar in Roger's house, and we had uh, three shots of tequila. And I thought... <laughs> Is this really <laughs> happening? It was a pinch yourself moment, and I kept doing that the whole way home. Well, look, the movie we're going to see so much of how Bohemian Rhapsody, of course, was uh, created and um, the live aid performance. But if none of that had happened for Queen, and say Queen was starting today, what do you think we would think of them if this band shot onto the scene now? Do you think people would pay attention still? I think they would pay as much, if not more, attention. I think the one thing about Queen is they were so ahead of their time. I mean, when Bohemian Rhapsody came out, it was panned. And this is a song that kids, you know, as young as four or five know. So that that's just not, that's not a mistake. Mm. That The band is timeless. The, the, the messages in the songs are timeless. I mean, you say, we will rock you. We are the champions. Find me somebody to love. I mean, they're very simple, but then you dig into what those songs mean, the the emotion that, that, that is put behind them, the work musically that uh, just bends mm -hmm. every genre. These guys broke every convention and stereotype of what music was, and we're told it was never going to work, and it does, and it will always work. Well, Rami Malik, you've played an Egyptian god in Night in the Museum and now you're playing a rock god here in Bohemian Rhapsody. Congratulations and um, thank you so much for talking to us here in Adelaide. Thank you so much. I believe that's the home of a friend of mine, Gary Sweet. Oh, Adelaide. it is. Yeah. Guys are licious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe next time you can come down under and stay at Gary's place. <laughs> I, I sure will. That won't right. be the first time. <laughs> All right. Rami, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Cheers. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Uh, he is actually one of the early favourites for Best Actor at the Oscars next year for that role. But, um, look, Bohemian Rhapsody will be in cinemas in Australia on the 1st of November.